I'm your online business expert. Today I wanted to tell you about something very basic to a lot of people that use Outlook. Um, I learned from many of my clients that they just simply don't know how to set up an email account in Outlook even though they have it on their computers so they end up just using their web email accounts. So today I'm going to just show you very quickly how to set up an email account in Outlook so that you can pull your emails into Outlook and if you have more than one account this it, this works for all of your accounts and um, you can set them up to all come into Outlook in one place. So here we go. So the first thing you want to do is to open Outlook and then select Tools. Then you want to select Account Settings. Click on New. Then you want to choose your email service. In this case it's going to be Microsoft Exchange, POP3, IMAP, or HTTP. Now each one of those has a different um, method for setup, but for the sake of this demo, let's just use the Microsoft Exchange, POP3. So just click into that box and then click the Next button. You now want to choose Manually Configure Service Settings. So near the bottom, you want to click on Manually Configure Server Settings for Additional Server Types, and then click the Next button. Select Internet Email, and then again click Next. Now this is where you're going to set up your email logon information. So whatever your email logon information, information is when you access it on the web, this is the information that you are going to include here. So you want to put in your name. Now, let me say something about your name. In this instance, your name is what you want people to see when they receive an email from you. So even though your email address, like mine, for example, is Gina at Online Biz Expert, um, I want them to actually see online biz expert when an email arrives from me. So in the your name field, I will type online biz expert. And then in the email address field, I will type the actual email address, which is gina at onlinebizexpert.com. Then we're going to continue. Notice that the server information is defaulted to the POP3. And if you click on that little arrow, you'll see the different types that we mentioned earlier. Um, I wouldn't recommend using any of the other types at the moment unless you become a lot more familiar in understanding how each of those works. For now, the POP3 is going to work fine for most people. So this is where we're going to tell Outlook where our email is hosted. So these are the incoming and outgoing mail servers. And one of the things I like of the host company that I use, HostGator, is that the email, sorry, the incoming and outgoing mail servers are the same. So that makes it fairly easy for me to remember and um, I don't have to be looking around. But if you don't know what it is, if you check with your web hosting or wherever you're hosting your email, be it Yahoo or any of the free, any of the free ones, you can find, um, you, you want to look for the incoming mail server and then the outgoing mail server, which is referred to as SMTP. So you want to type that information in there exactly the way you're instructed to do so from your web host. Then you want to type in the username and in this instance the username is actually the email address that we're setting up. So you want to go ahead and put your email address and the password you want to type is going to be the same password that you use to access your email online. And of course you want to make sure that you check the remember password box otherwise you would have to keep putting in the email address, sorry, the email password every single time it goes out to fetch email. So let's just go ahead and check remember passwords. Then you want to, you don't want to click anything just yet. You don't want to click the next button just yet. What we want to, what we do want to click is the more settings button. Now let's just pause for a minute. 
when you click on the more settings button you're going to see four tabs and one of the tabs is going to be outgoing mail server you do not need to touch that unless if if your email web host or if your web host or whomever is hosting your email has a different server for outgoing mail then you do want to click on that tab and enter the necessary information but most web hosting nowadays use a single server for incoming and outgoing so for the purposes of this demo we're just going to leave that alone and assume that the um, incoming and outgoing mail is on the same server so click on more settings and what we are going to do on the general tab we're going to enter some information and the first thing you're going to put is the name by which you want to recognize the email address internally excuse me many people um, set up lots of emails to come into their Outlook account so this is how you're going to recognize which email address you're working with so you want to put a name in there that you can recognize for example in my instance I use info at online biz expert mailbox at online biz expert as well as Gina at online biz expert and so when I set up my Outlook I gave each one of them a name that I can recognize. One is info, one is mailbox, and one is Gina. So I can know at a glance which email address I'm working with. Then you want to go ahead and put in your company name or organization name and then the reply email. You want to make sure you enter the email address from which you would like your emails to be sent. Now if you have more than one email address set in Outlook, you can put any one of those email addresses in the reply. For example, what I do, although I have info and mailbox at online biz, I also have Gina at. And so for all of my emails, I have my replies coming from Gina at onlinebizexpert.com because I think people like to know that they're actually communicating with a real life person. So you can put whichever email address you have set up in Outlook in that field, in the reply email field. Then what we want to do now is go click on the advanced tab. And what we're going to do there is we actually tell your email host to leave a copy of your messages on the server. And I highly recommend doing this so that if in the, in the if for some reason you discover that you've lost an email that is very important or you you can't find it for some reason because you've misfiled it or you deleted it by mistake, if you have left a copy of it on the server, you can log into the your email account online and find that email still sitting on the in that box because it's on the server when to tell the server the copy of that email. And you can see it defaults to 10 days um, and you can also tell it whether you want the server to delete it the same time as you're delete, deleting it from Outlook. So that's completely up to you. And I recommend, at least in the beginning, that you you know, keep a copy of your messages on the server just in case there are any accidents or any crashes or anything like that. So once you've done that, what we want to do next is click on the... Once you've clicked OK and, and you closed out of that menu. The next thing you're going to do is to click on test account. And once you've done that, if you have set up everything correctly, Microsoft will send you an email to your inbox to the address that you just set up. Now if for some reason you get an error message, it means that you did not set up something accurately and, and the very the most likely places are going to be in how you typed in the email address and perhaps the password at some one or two points in, in your setup. So that's where you want to check. Check how you've typed in the email address and the passwords because those are the things that the server will be looking for to determine if things are set up correctly. So once you've done that and you've tested and retested and now you've received the email, you know that you've successfully set up your Outlook account and congratulations. Thank you.